Hey guys, <laughs> don't faint, <laughs> the old cripple's back. Talking of backs, I'm still struggling, but there we are. Uh, hardly any shop time, it's in a state of total chaos, needs a lot of sorting out, but uh, I have just videoed a small thing which might be of slight interest, it was just a way of getting around a problem. As I said in the uh, clips, quick fix, down and dirty. Uh, anyway, apart from that, uh, I hope you're all coping. The uh, situation right now with this virus is absolutely crazy. It's uh, hard to know where it's going and for how long. So anyway, there we are. Mustn't waffle. Uh, just saying again, I hope you're okay. If I can get out here and do something else later on, I probably will, but uh, I don't think I've put anything up for about two or three months. <laughs> so there we are. Anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. A friend of mine wants a couple of very low tolerance uh, spacers for a three quarter inch shaft he's got. I can't remember what it's being used for, but uh, he said, Can you make me a couple of quick spacers, about three sixteenths? Um, of course, the quick way to do it would be in the lathe, plus the fact that all I've got available is a very short, stubby piece of thick walled aluminum tube. Uh, I could put that in the chuck and part it off, but I've got a slight electrical problem I haven't finished fixing on the lathe. So I'm going to use the bandsaw, rough and ready. But the reason it might be of interest is because quite some time ago I made this little fixture plate. Uh, if I remember rightly, Chuck Bomarito made one and gave me the idea to make one myself. Now, of course, the small piece of tube isn't going to hold in the vise. So what we're going to do is set it up, set it up on the fixture plate and uh, take a couple of quick cuts and probably finish on the belt sander if necessary. All right, <coughs> so we've got a, <laughs> this is all down and dirty really. So I've got a very basic clamping set up. And uh, this piece of tube was faced off in the lathe, so I know it's square at the back. So I've set up square, done that up, and uh, we'll see if it'll take a cut all right. I've marked it up. As I say, it's very approximate. Very approximate. Let me just get this set up. Right, let's see how it goes. the first one. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, <clears throat> we're ready for the second cut. I could probably get one more after this at a pinch, but this is about the limit of what I can hold. But uh, it's hopefully we'll be all right on this one. enough clamping force there. Uh, 
Let's see if we can pick up the cut. There's the second one, nearly had a disaster. So there they are, we'll get to clean those up and see if they'll do the job. <laughs> Mission achieved. Uh, there's still some saw cut marks, these are actually very difficult to hold on the belt sander. What I've done mainly is use the Noga on the ID and get rid of that burr which is really all that matters and to reiterate I was told to, tolerances are very uncritical so there we are two shaft spacers and they've actually come out I haven't put the uh, mic on those but they come out pretty well identical so I'm quite pleased with that for a quick fix Just playing with a new toy. <laughs> this weird shaped item is actually a, apparently a very loud whistle. We'll see how it works out, but uh, the machine's doing pretty good. This was a very kind gift from my friend Arthur in uh, Arizona. Total surprise. Very neat little machine. Very nice. <laughs>